Everyone, this is Three Questions with the incredible Amy Gonzalez. I haven't done this in a while. All right. Amy, Amy is a wonderful principal. Her and I have connected like a ton over the years through email. We got to see each other just recently. This is actually, um, I record podcasts like all the time. I haven't recorded anything. So I'm like a little slow with my buttons. I'm just giving you a heads up. <laughs> I'll be kind. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. So, hey, first of all, I have connected with your school, Nan Clayton Elementary. So before we even get into it. <laughs> a big shout out. So I just want to make sure I say hi to them. But Amy, Yay. thanks so much. Thanks so much for being on the podcast. And also thanks for your leadership uh, and all the work that you do. Every time I talk to you, you're such a positive leader. Uh, and it's not like you don't actually address all the crap that we have to deal with uh, in our world today. But I know that you're so solution focused. So that's why I'm really excited to talk to you today. And I know that your uh, teachers appreciate you tremendously as well. I've got messages from them over the years as well. So that's a, that's a pretty good sign, right? Not like, Oh, like you need to you can talk to Amy messages, but like, <laughs> right. Hey, so Amy, that's thanks. Awesome. Thanks again for, for being on uh, the podcast. So when we look at your inspirations of, you know, and the work that you do in education, uh, and you've been a principal vice principal at the same school for, for nine years, when you look back at your career and you look back at your experience as a student, who is a teacher that inspired you and why? Well, I've said this lady's name um, since I was five myself, actually, Bernice Washburn. Mrs. Bernice Washburn was my kindergarten teacher. Um, mind you, I went to half day kindergarten. <laughs> so right. during my time with her, I, I just loved her. I, I have a great family. I felt love at home. I wasn't I wasn't in need of anything. Basic needs were met. Mm -hmm. But I enjoyed my time in the classroom with her. It was a little portable in Rockport, Texas, and um, we just, I remember learning, and I remember when that light bulb went off, and I started reading, which was really exciting to me, right. and I just decided somewhere towards that last semester of kindergarten, like, I'm going to be a kindergarten teacher. I can do this. This is what I want to do. George, fun fact, fast forward. Um, so many years and my very first job was a kindergarten teacher. Really? I never wavered from that since I was five. Well, I was going to be in so. the MBA, so that didn't work out. But <laughs> uh, yeah. so you know, we can't, we can't all reach <laughs> that, but, <laughs> but I've managed and I, the, the funniest thing I was actually presenting one, uh, one summer at the TEPSA conference here in Austin, Texas. And I actually put a picture of myself and Mrs. Washburn at my kindergarten graduation, you know, for lack of better words, and oh. my high school graduation. And because she, she was actually an aunt to one of my classmates, but I'm pretty sure she went there just to see me walk the stage. I'm, I'm pretty set on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I had her picture up and somebody in the audience one of the audience members said is that bernice washburn and That's i said cool. yes and it was one of her co-workers they took a picture of it they took a picture cool. of me we've connected we're facebook friends now i yeah. mean I, I do credit my educational pathway to her um, because if, if I didn't say that at five, I don't know what I would have said at six, seven, eight, nine, moving on. Um, but that was so impactful for me. And I had a very linear projection and I, and it happened. And I, I do think sometimes, man, what if I didn't like my kindergarten teacher? Where would I be today? But, um, that that's, I, I have to go, I have to take it way back and I have to take it to her. Okay. Bernice Washburn, if you are listening. <laughs> Uh, shout out from Amy here today. That's actually like it's credit to like all the like you know pre K kindergarten teachers that really kind of set the tone you know for the mm -hmm. for the rest of the time. Like it, like if if all the expectations of what you have to teach um, isn't already enough, it's that that kind of setting that groundwork for kids over the years. I actually uh, Mrs. Stock, my kindergarten teacher, I she taught me. I, this is weird. She taught me two different methods and I chose the easier method, bunny ears. I always bring this up, uh, how I, and I actually still tie my shoes in bunny ear loops to this I day. 
and I think of her literally every single time I do it. Like, it's just kind of weird. Like I do it, you know, That's and I, true. you know, if anyone knows, I have a little bit of a shoe fetish. So like, this is like seven, eight <laughs> times a day when I'm switching shoes up, right? So, <laughs> That's so awesome. Shout- yeah. Kin- kindergarten teachers matter. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so now you are an incredible leader. I know you're in, is it a doctoral program right now, right? I am. I'm in the, um, I'm at UT at, and I'm a fellow in the cooperative superintendency program. So wow. I'll be graduating. I'll have a superintendent certification and, and we'll see where that takes me. Right, but you're never leaving your school, though. I don't want to. Oh. Right? You can't see my heart, but I love, right. I love my Clayton Cardinals, <laughs> a right. thousand percent. So you, you, you not only are inspired by great leaders, you study great leaders, you study, you know, what makes them great. So when you think of the administrators in your lifetime, whether it could be a student too, like who's someone that you think of and why? So I got it, Darnell Schweiber. <laughs> Fifth grade. I'm to do it right away. <laughs> early, early, go. early air horn. There we go. Mrs. Schreiber. So she was my fifth grade elementary principal. And so for a short time, my family, we we actually moved to Florida and we were there for a couple of years for my da- my dad's work. And then we came back to our little hometown and I had missed, you know, several elementary years there. And again, small town, um, everybody knows each other. You know, these kids have been going to school with each other since kindergarten. And for whatever reason, I don't even remember why, but my mom set up a meeting with my fifth grade principal and we met and, you know, my previous school, I was on safety patrol and I was devastated. I couldn't do mm-hmm. safety patrol. And, and so my mom shared that and I remember being just a little bit embarrassed, but Again, not really sure what the content of that meeting was, but right. I already knew I wanted to be a kindergarten teacher somewhere along the way in second grade. I decided I wanted to get a doctor in education. And as I was observing her in that meeting done, I'm going to be a principal one day. I was 10. (laughs) You are like an early (laughs) achiever. (laughs) I still still don't know what I want to do, which is incredible. (laughs) You're hilarious. Um, so yeah, that was it. She was kind. She was respectful. You know, if I'm being honest, I I feel specifically that fifth grade year, like our town's a little bit of like have and have nots. I was on that have not side, but I really feel that she she saw me as a learner and just somebody who actually contributed to just like the greater good of the school and. Every time I would see her, she like knew me by name, which I thought was huge, Um, which now I think about that, um, you know, and as a as an administrator myself, that's absolutely a goal of mine to know each of my students by name. Right. And so it was really, really um, empowering, I feel. And so I was set and I remember going home and telling my parents, "Okay, I'm going to teach kindergarten. I want to get my doctorate education and one day I'm going to be a principal. And they're like. Sounds like a plan. So um, that's what I did. I love it. I love it. And that like those, those little stories, like, you know, thinking about how people inspired you to do something. I think for me, one of the things I've been talking about just a ton lately is the idea that school should be a place where kids actually can identify their gifts when they walk out. Like so many students walk out of school and go like, I don't know what I want to do. And I think like some, I think almost the the structure of school almost intentionally confuses them, right? Like try to do everything. And so, you know, hoping like listening to your stories that it's not that I want every kid to walk out wanting to be a teacher, but I want every kid to walk out, you know, wanting or knowing what they want to to do, you know, kind of seeing there and, you know, not that those things can't change, but I like, do we confuse kids right when they walk out or do we actually help them find what their purpose and passion is and so not all of us are lucky enough to have that you know i get that from my family all the time we all didn't know what we wanted to do since we were five amy and i'm like hey i get you it's cool find yourself i'm okay with that i i just feel incredibly fortunate to have these great women great educators in front of me that truly just cleared that path for me it was just so evident to me like this is what i'm here to do um and so i cannot relate sometimes you know i I absolutely try and empathize when you know um, i hear stories of like my colleagues and their kids are graduating and they don't know what they want to do and 
you know, I, I listen and I'm just like, gosh, I, I couldn't imagine leaving my high school senior year without my little plan in place. Because I think for me, that's just what really helped me. I'm a first year generation college student, right? So navigating that was hard. My parents had a little bit of experience getting my older brother into college and then had a little bit more experience getting myself and, you know, being able to go through and getting it done. I mean, it's a huge accomplishment not just for myself, but for my family. And now, you know, one day graduating with a third degree, I just, I have a lot of pride in that. And just, you know, and I share that with my family. It's not just for myself. That's awesome. All right. So last question. So obviously you, you know, you knew what you're doing basically at birth, right? right? <laughs> yep. But that doesn't mean you haven't like adjusted, adapted and like learned different things through your process. So if you can go back to that very first year of teaching when you were a kindergarten teacher yourself, if you can go mm -hmm. back and talk to yourself, what advice would you give first oh my year gosh. teacher Amy? Well, it, it's a blur. Um, so honestly, one thing I would I would say to myself is trust yourself, right? I, mm -hmm. I had I had observed teachers my whole life essentially. And, and a lot of the work I did in high school, I had the opportunity to go to an elementary school and mentor there. Um, my university did a great job of getting us into school buildings in the city, you know, where I was and attended very early on in our um, college career. And so I knew, again, I had so much passion and conviction, but not enough confidence. Right. And that's where I think I would go back to myself and be like, girl, what were you thinking? <laughs> um, because I would let that impede me sometimes yeah. of like, uh, I'm not doing this right. Or I would just be, you know, you are your worst critic. And I, I absolutely own that. And I'm still, you know, chide myself every now and then when I feel like it wasn't the best move. But um, just really knowing that I had that capability, even as a first year teacher, to empower those kiddos, to provide mm -hmm. them you know, a strong building block, a foundation for their elementary years to come and um, and owning that because, I mean, I think about that first year class sometimes. I'm like, well, I hope they're okay. <laughs> I hope I didn't mess them up. Right, because, right. Uh, and I've connected actually with, with one of them. Um, I, I was in the HEB parking lot because we're here in Texas, right? So I was at HEB parking lot and I had just, I heard this voice. This was a couple of years back and it's like, Miss Miss Guerrero, which was my maiden name, and I'm like nobody knows me by that here. And sure enough, it was a mom of one of those kiddos that I taught in kindergarten, my first year teaching. Um, she brought the student over who was like I don't know, to uh, just seemed like a huge woman. Like oh my gosh, you're grown up. And we talked, and they absolutely remembered me. I remembered her. She was going to college, going to be graduating in two. I mean, it was just like. Yeah. Look, one got there. Yay. <laughs> um, but it was just, it's really just going back. And I would say this to my first year self, and I say this to my own first year teachers, you've got to have that confidence and really know that you, you this is what you're meant to do. And we're, we have you here for a reason. And, and that's what I would tell myself. You know, there, like, I, I really appreciate the confidence comments and, you know, that belief in yourself and it. Um, I've talked about this previously. It, you know, confidence is really crucial to the work that we do. And it doesn't mean that you don't acknowledge your mistakes. It means that you actually mm -hmm. do and you grow from it. Right. Cause I think Absolutely. sometimes arrogance, you know, can be like, yeah, whatever, I don't care. Right. But that confidence is like, yeah, like, Hey, I made a mistake. Let's, let's learn from it and move on. But the other thing that you said too, and it's really kind of, uh, we need to do this more in education is you knew you want to be a teacher and you watched other teachers. You kind of subtly hinted at that. I remember I used to referee basketball and I love basketball. I've been watching it my entire life. Mm -hmm. But when I started ref, wet, refing games, um, I actually stopped watching games. I started watching refs and how they dealt with stuff. And one of the things that I actually noticed was, um, and I, I wonder, and I'm kind of just talking off the top of my head here, is the best referees you didn't notice in a game because they weren't mm -hmm. dealing with like, right? And and I wonder if there's some truth to that in teaching, right? Because it's like they're really great teachers kind of like, of course they lead and there's like, it's not like they're not doing anything, but they put kids in positions to success where you almost don't Absolutely. see them, right? It's the same, the same with true with leaders, right? If you are a bad principal, you'll hear about it all the time, but if you're great, you don't ever seem to get the credit, right? <laughs> Which it's not, true. you know, like people don't say that too. So 
Um, yeah, I just, I, I thought that was really interesting, but Amy, it is, it is so awesome to talk to you. I'm so glad that, you know, and by the way, for everyone listening, uh, I asked Amy to do this podcast and I gave her some times not knowing she's on spring break and she just said, <laughs> yeah, I'll do it on break. So like, and I'm like, Oh, I am so sorry. She's like, no, I love this stuff. So I'm really sorry. I'm wrecking your break, right? You it are was, not wrecking it. You're it adding to it. Vacation or podcast with George and somehow. I, re- I just wrecked your vacation. So seems like, like a oh. no brainer to me, George. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> hey, thanks so much everyone for listening. Amy, thank you not only for being on the podcast, but all the incredible work they do. Thanks everyone for listening. Have a wonderful day. 